Max Hastings, you're a London journalist who's been... Sorry, Max. Max Hastings, you're a London journalist who's just returned from three weeks in Rhodesia's northeast, an area which is virtually a battle zone at the moment in the regime's fight against guerrilla ac activities. Who appears to be winning the fight? Militarily, the Rhodesian army have got the terrorists licked in that they've killed more than 80 of them, captured more than double that number, and only 30 white security forces and civilians have been killed. But the Rhodesians' basic problem is that in order to contain terrorism, they've had to mobilize the country on a scale that I think it will be very difficult to maintain indefinitely. That there are only 250,000 whites against um, some 5 million Africans. And at the moment, the territorials are having to be called up regularly. There's only about 1,000 white regular frontline troops, uh, nine battalions of territorials, 30,000 odd police reservists. Um, it, it's a very slender force to cover the ground that they have got to cover and to contain any escalation of terrorism. The role of white civilians in the area of people like farmers and their families, how is it affecting their lives and their work? Their lives, I, I think profoundly, in that the great majority in the Northeast have had to build 10-foot security fences around their houses. Their wives have been taught to shoot. They've all been issued with FN automatic rifles, which they usually sleep with in their bedrooms. Their children are taught to throw themselves flat on the floor uh, if, as soon as they're ordered. There's very much an atmosphere of readiness for the worst. But at the same time, I think that they're absolutely determined at the moment to see it through. Is there any evidence of Rhodesian forces being deployed across the border in Mozambique? much so. I think that in the last few months, uh, one has to remember that in the 1960s, the terrorists were coming across from Zambia in not very great numbers, and the Rhodesians liked to think they were just a bunch of outsiders uh, who were just coming across the Zambezi and could be dealt with without much trouble. But this year's campaign has been largely mounted from Mozambique. They're coming across in far larger numbers. They seem to be better trained, very well equipped, um, although some of them still throw down their arms uh, as soon as they see a helicopter, they're stiffened by a hardcore terrorists, some of whom have been trained in Moscow, others by Chinese instructors in Tanzania. And once the Rhodesians got the measure of this, and they were taken by surprise when this campaign first begun, they were taken by surprise by the scale and by the, the size of the threat they were dealing with. Once they got the measure of it, they realized that their only chance was to attempt to wipe out the guerrilla bases in Mozambique. And to begin with, only their special air service squadrons were sent in. But now, there's no doubt that everything that they can put in there is being sent in to carry out sweeps of the guerrilla bases in Mozambique with the assistance and in cooperation with the Portuguese authorities. I met an NCO in the Rhodesian Light Infantry who talked to me very casually and in some detail about uh, their cooperation with the Portuguese and how they, the Rhodesians, have very little respect for the Portuguese because they, he, uh, the NCO I talked to said that they just crashed through the bush uh, singing and shouting because they don't want to make contact with the enemy. But the Rhodesians captured a document in one of the guerrilla camps in which the guerrillas described the Rhodesian army as the ghosts because be the final outcome. Will guerrilla activity bring about the independence it's being employed for? Certainly not tomorrow or the day after. But I think that the campaign that began last December has brought home to white Rhodesians how vulnerable they are, 250,000 of them, against not only the 5 million Africans inside Rhodesia, but against all the independent African states around them.